Alright, so Martin's Ferry preview, what did you think? I thought they looked pretty solid. Uh, and of course, you know, like we talked earlier, you know, you only see these teams for about two, three hours for one day. You don't get to see them for a whole three, four weeks. I know they're coming off a six and four season. Um, I know that uh, the last time they had made the playoffs was 2014. Uh, but anytime you have, you know, Dave Bernie as your head coach, you know, you're, you're going to win some ball games. I know his winning percentage altogether is over 68%. And um, I, I think if they stay healthy, I think they have a big year this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do have 18 returning lettermen, so that should help. Absolutely, I, I think it does. And you got this, this lettermen playing in both offense and defense. You know, I, I think that, um, like I said, if they stay healthy, I think they'll, they'll have a good season this year. Okay, and here's the Martins Ferry Purple Riders preview. I'm here with Corey Bennett. All right, what's your number and position? Um, number 19, wide receiver and defensive back. All right, what's your favorite football movie of all time? Uh, Friday Night Lights. Dalton Hoover. All right, what's your uh, number and position? Uh, number 34, running back and linebacker. All right, what's your favorite food? Pizza. Hunter Bodkin. What's your number and position? 66, left guard, defense back. All right, what's your favorite football movie of all time? Remember the Titans. Jason Husbark. All right, what's your number and position? 62, defensive and offensive tackle. All right, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? I'm a bird. Demetrius Dykes. All right, what's your number and position? 67, center and right, defensive end. All right, what's your favorite football movie of all time? Blindside. John Jeter. All right, what's your number and position? 11, wide receiver and defensive back. All right, now do you have a date yet for homecoming? I do not. See, ladies, he's available. <laughs> Raekwon Prayer. All right, what's your number and position? 51, right guard and defensive end. All right, if you're on a date with a girl, where are you taking her out to eat? Applebee's. All right, what's your number and position? Six, five, offensive and defensive tackle. All right, what's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. Logan DeVarro. All right, what's your number and position? Number 40, fullback, and middle linebacker. All right, who's your Hollywood crush? Beyonce. All right, what's your number and position? All right, do you have a date yet for him coming? All right, ladies, there's another one. All right, what's your number and position? 76, defensive and offensive tackle. All right, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? DeAndre Q. All right, what's your number and position? 75, offensive and defensive tackle. All right, blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Blonde. Rice. All right, what's your number and position? 15, wide receiver and safety. All right, what's your least favorite chore to do at the house? Cleaning. Donald Trey. All right, what's your number and position? Nine, tight end, outside linebacker. Okay, what is your favorite food? Wings. Ian Farrell. All right, what's your number and position? Uh, 56, center and linebacker. All right, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? A tiger. No, All right, what's your number and position? 53, red right guard, defensive tackle. All right, what is your favorite food? Pizza. Jason Horse. All right, what's your uh, number and position? Brady, defensive back and wide out. All right, who is your Hollywood crush? Beyonce. All right, what's your number and position? 68 and offensive and defensive tackle. All right, you're on a date with a girl. Where are you taking her out to eat? Like all of us. All right, what's your number and position? 77. Least favorite chore to do at the house? It'll probably be like a deep school. All right, what's your number and position? 33, running back. I trained with Nate Johnson. Who's your Hollywood crush right now? Yeah, I trained with him. Nate Johnson. Jake Perez. All right, what's your number and position? 7, quarterback and outside linebacker. Okay. Blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Blondes. What's your number of position? 17 and kicker. 
All right, here's your Hollywood crush. Caleb okay, Wilson. What's your number and position? 25, wide receiver and outside linebacker. Favorite food? Chicken. What's your number and position? Uh, 84, defensive back and wide receiver. Favorite football movie of all time? What's your number and position? 74, offense and defense. All right, what's your least favorite chore to do at the house? Washington. William Baylor. All right, what's your number and position? 64, center, defensive back. All right, have you found a date yet for him coming? All right, there's another one, ladies. Alex Bennett. All right, what's your number and position? 13, wideout, DB. All right, what's your favorite food? Evan Carpenter. What's your number and position? 55, defensive All right, blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Blondes. What's your number and position? 54, left guard, linebacker. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? What's your number and position? 26, running back, outside linebacker. Favorite football movie of all time? What's your number and position? Uh, 81, tight end, and defensive end. Favorite food? Uh, pizza. What's your number and position? 86, Hollywood Crush. Hollywood Crush. Smith. What's your number and position? Six, quarterback, safety. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Oh, sorry. What's your number and position? 88, wide receiver, middle linebacker. Well, who is your Hollywood crush right now? Kate Upton. All right, what's your number and position? 68, uh, left guard. Okay. What is your least favorite chore to do at the house? Brian Meeker. All right, what's your number and position? 71, center, and defense tackle. Hey, what is your favorite football movie of all time? All right, what's your number and position? 20, running back and outside linebacker. All right, blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Blondes. Oh, my God. Jake, your girlfriend ain't even a blonde. Oh, yeah, you're serious. Jake, your girlfriend ain't even a blonde. That's hilarious. All right, what's your number and position? 70, wide receiver, middle linebacker. All right, you're on a date with a girl. Where are you taking her out to eat? Hooters. Go Riders. All right, I am here with Dalton Hoover. Dalton, thanks a lot for joining us here at the desk. Dalton, what's the feeling like in the locker room with these guys as you get ready for, to prepare for the 2017 season? Uh, it's a good feeling. Uh, everybody's out here working hard in practice and uh, getting ready for our senior season. All right, of course, it is going into your senior season. What's it been like playing for Coach Bruni over the past four years? Uh, it's been amazing these past four years, just being around for football. It's a good place to be. All right, well, I wish you the best of luck here in the 2017 season. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Thank you. Okay, I am joined now by Hunter Botkins. Hunter, thanks a lot for joining us here at the desk. Okay, behind closed doors, when the coaches aren't around, obviously arguments, scuffles, fights happen between teammates. Have you seen any of that here the first few weeks as you guys are getting ready for the season? No, I think we're pretty close with each other, and that's why they were be pretty good this season. Okay, as a freshman, what did you learn from the senior class then that has helped you prepare you to be a senior this year? That they were all really close, and they had good chemistry together, and that's why they were going to be the same as them. All right, I'm here with Corey Bennett. Corey, thanks a lot for joining us. As a student athlete, how do you balance out the schoolwork and practicing and getting prepared for a football game? Well, during school, obviously, I focus on the school work and getting it done at home, and then when I'm on the field, it's just mainly football. Okay. How do you handle outside distractions? Obviously, like media coverage like this, you have family, you have friends, everybody obviously is a coach, you know, when they talk to you. How do you handle the outside distractions also as you get prepared for a game? Well, I just try to zen everything out on game day and focus on the game. Okay, biggest thing that you need to work on as an individual on the field is what? Probably my route running. Okay. Now, the freshman class that's in here, how have, how have they done the first few weeks in getting prepared to play high school football? How are they looking? They're all going pretty well. They're all practicing hard, and I think they'll be pretty good when they become seniors.
right, I am here now with the head coach of Martins Ferry, Pro Bowl Riders, Coach Dave Bruni. Coach, thanks a lot for allowing us to attend practice here today. How many years now has it been you coaching all together? 45. 45. How many years here in Martins Ferry? Uh, 39 as a head coach and 3 as an assistant, so 42. 42, okay. So on the schedule, obviously, if you talk to certain people, they'll say, okay, the biggest rivalry is Belair. Others will say, well, no, it's, you know, St. Clairsville. Others will say Buckeye Local. You as a coach, who has been the biggest rival to you on a respectful standpoint, obviously? I mean, obviously, they're all close games. They're all, they're all tough teams. But what team do you face that, that means the most to you? Well, I, if you talk to anybody from Martin Ferry that has an age on them, it certainly would be the Blair game. Okay. The tradition and the rivalry between the two communities, uh, very similar type blue collar, collar communities, uh, work ethic. Uh, football in both towns has been a lot for over 100 years, so yeah, we go, we go with that. Okay. What is the biggest challenge facing the 2017 team that you're coaching right now? Right now? Yeah. Uh, ourselves. I think any time, uh, you know, when you're in the middle of two-a-day practices and, uh, you know, you start to get fatigued physically and, uh, and mentally, you got to win that battle against yourself first before you can beat anybody else. Absolutely. Okay, expectations for your assistant coaches. What do you expect to get out of them to push these players more? Because obviously you're, you're the general, you're the leader of this team. What's the expectations with the coaching staff? You know, first of all, I'm, I'm blessed that uh, here at Martin Sperry, we've, we've been able to hire great coaches over the years. Uh, several of them have been head coaches. Uh, a couple of them left and you know were head coaches and then returned. So we're really blessed and not, you know, I, I feel confident in, in their teaching ability. They do a great job on and off the field with our kids. And, uh, and, and as I said, I, I'm very, very fortunate to uh, be in the community that I'm in, uh, where football means a lot, and where our assistants do such a great job. Okay, you're an old school coach, and I love that about you. I played for an old school coach myself. Okay, how do you handle social media right now of course it, it, it's completely different than what it was like obviously when i played obviously way different than when you played how do you handle these players with social media well i, I don't understand social media <laughs> does, nor do i care to okay uh, you know we, we, we tell them don't put anything out there that you know that you would be ashamed of uh, but hell i don't even I, i've got a flip phone I, I know we could not text you. I know. No, <laughs> I love I, that about and, you. I got to call the house. And I don't. And, and I don't. The only thing I can do on that phone is take calls and and make calls. And that's all I want to do. All right. Absolutely. All right. So there's a freshman. There's a sophomore. There's a junior watching this that it has not played football but wants to play football. Why should they try out and play football? Well, right now it's too late. To do well, that. no. I'm so, saying for senior year. I'm. I, I don't think you know. It's I, and not only football, but interscholastic athletics in general and all the clubs and organizations in the school I think they're you know the extracurricular activities add things to your education that you don't get in the classroom or out of a book and I think that that's very very important uh, you know football in particular teaches you know teamwork uh, it's the greatest team sport ever invented uh, discipline responsibility I think you have to have character uh, and, and all of those things that go into making kids successful in whatever they do. But uh, the extracurricular activity, not just football, is all part of the interscholastic experience. And I think, you know, you only pass this way one time. You ought to take advantage and drink from as many cups as you can uh, while you're involved because once, once that's over, it's over. You don't know, get to come back and repeat it. I wish I would have, wish I should have, could have, would have. Yeah. You got to do it while you're going through it. And don't be the guy that runs into me at the mall when you're 25 and said, Coach had quit and it was a good decision. I've never, never had that happen. You know, a lot of guys said it was a bad decision. But uh, no, I had somebody say that. Nobody said it was a good decision. All these years coaching, who, who inspired you to get into coaching? Who got you to the level where you're at now? All these years coaching. I, uh, I had two really fine coaches. Uh, Pete Barron was a, 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 my high school football coach when I was a junior. 
and we were in our firing phase at that time at Martins Ferry, where they weren't be coaching very long. And uh, then Larry Poirier, who coached in the NFL and numerous colleges around the country, uh, both those guys, and then um, you know that they, they set a good example, and, and you know it was something. Hey, I'd like to be like those guys, and and, and certainly my uh, college coach Joel Hess. Uh, he's passed down, and, and Cliff Hef Heffelfinger, who recruited me uh, to a high university. Those were guys that I, I, throughout my life, I felt I've owed something to, and I never, never wanted to let those guys down. All right, awesome. All right, uh, we got to host the uh, OVAX All-Star Game here, of course, this year with the construction going on over at Wheeling Island. What was the atmosphere like? I obviously I missed it. I had a wedding that day. I didn't get to be here. I, I was really, you know, upset about that. I wanted to see this game because. You know, it's, it's in our backyard, right. and, you know, obviously I live here in Martin Series as well. So what was the atmosphere like? What was it like hosting that game? Well, it was great. It was a packed house, and uh, it was a lot of work by a lot of people in, uh, you know, our community and, and, and our assistant coaches and superintendent and athletic director, and, uh, you know, everybody did a terrific job. And I think if you speak with the OVAC, they were very, very pleased with how things went here in Martin Ferry. But... That was a result of a, a lot of sacrifices by a lot of people that that made it work. But it was a it, it was really an electric atmosphere, and the stadium being you know a little bit smaller than Wheeling Island, uh, it, I think it it added to the the Friday night light lights aspect of of the game. It was it was great. All right, now how do you feel off of that? How would you feel if the OVAC decided to switch it up and say okay? You're playing the Ohio side and West Virginia side, so what happens if we do one game one year in West Virginia, the next year in Ohio? How great, would you feel great, about that? Great, great idea. Great idea. And we, we, you know, we look forward to, to hosting the game again. But there are other venues on the Ohio side that they could uh, you know, also look at. But I think centrally located, they made a good, good call. And should that uh, be part of the uh, OVAC's future planning, uh, we, we'd be tickled to death. Okay, so behind us right now, obviously we've got the field. Uh, the field got some upgrades. Care to tell us about some of the upgrades to the field? Well, we added uh, new progress uh, in, in it. Uh, just by the technology over the last 10 years, uh, the product is improved for uh, approximately the same money. And uh, it's uh, instead of a 8 to 10 year warranty, you know, we're 12 to 15. And, uh, you know, should get 17 or 18 years out of it, if not more. And uh, we're, we're, we're tickled to death to have it. Okay, I'm going to get you out of here with this question. Your son becomes the first head coach at Wheeling Jesuit. What's the feeling like first as a parent for a coach? We're asking you what the feeling is as a coach. What's the feeling like being the dad? Well, I, you know, I, I would just say this uh, about uh, Zach and, 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 and my other two children, Ashley and Trevor. Uh, you know, Cheryl and I are proud uh, of their athletic and academic achievements uh, throughout the course of their life, but we're prouder of the fact, uh, the type of people that they've become, their character, their work ethic, their integrity, uh, and I think if you have those things in place, success is going to follow. So I know this, uh, if hard work will do it, then Wheeling Jesuits got to keep it. Okay, at the dinner table? Uh, follow up, I guess, question to that. Uh, how many, how many times are we are we talking football at the dinner table, passing over some ideas? What do you think? Uh, once in a while we do that, but uh, that that uh, that occurred more at my father's table <laughs> uh, on Sunday afternoons. And at one time, my brother was coaching at Valera, and uh, while I was here, and uh, we were just average that year, and Valera had a pretty good football team, and. My brother mentioned to my father, uh, you know, Dad, if, you know, if we beat Perry this week, next week, then we're going to win the OVAC and probably get a playoff berth. And he never looked up from his plate and said, let me tell you something. It wouldn't matter if you and your brother were coaching at Valera. I would never root for <laughs> So it was pretty diehard. Family, but yeah, yeah, certainly. And tradition, tradition meant a lot. And I'm sure that there's been discussions like that around uh, the table with Valera also. Absolutely. All right. Well, once again, thanks a lot for letting us be here. Coach Dave Bruni here of the Martin Ferry Purple Riders will be here Friday Night Lights pregame show game of the week when they face Wheeling Central. Coach, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.